today I'm back out in the polytunnel at the heated bench and I'm going to plant some tomato seeds. Tomato seeds can be planted any time between mid-February and mid-March ideally and that will give them enough growing season for them to reach maturity and for you to be able to harvest fruit that are the colour that you hope they'll be and not just green tomatoes. In my seed tin I've four varieties, three of which are newish seed, I think I bought them last year, and one is an older seed. So I'm going to give them all a go. Um, I have a Arctic Circle tomato, which is a bush variety. So for any of you who are new to, my, new to tomatoes, there are two general types of tomato. There's a bush variety and there's another cane or cordon variety. The cordon one is also sometimes called indeterminate and the bush variety would be a determinate. The main difference with these uh, tomatoes is that the bush tomato, you don't have to do anything with them. So they're a great beginner plant, actually. You just plant them and get them in the compost and water them, maybe feed them as they're um, flowering and fruiting with a seaweed fertilizer, and, and that's it, uh, away they go. With the cordon or vine, varieties then you would be looking to give them some support. I usually tie, tie string down from the tunnel here and plant the string underneath the vine and let it let it wind its way back up it or help it to wind its way back up. Um, and also you need to side shoot, take the side shoots off of um, the cordon varieties as well. So they're the main two differences and then within that there's a whole heap of varieties and colours and all the rest. We've discovered we really quite like the yellow varieties we find them quite sweet um, but what we have here is as I mentioned it's an arctic circle tomato and I chose it chose it because it is supposed to like cold temperatures arctic circle um, type bread especially for a shorter growing season which we have here um, also if it's sheltered and in a sunny position you might get away with having these outside in a container but it really depends on, on where your garden is. I also have a Galinar Siberian cherry tomato, which um, actually is also a couple of years old, 2018, but we'll give, we'll give it a chance. Again, that's a vine tomato, a cordon one, uh, a cherry tomato, and that's a yellow one. One that we really enjoyed last year uh, is the Zenter Lassite tomato. It's a Latvian tomato and again teardrop, teardrop shape so I actually muddled it with my yellow submarines last year. I didn't label very well. Um, but it's teardropped and another vine tomato that we'll have to train. And then finally the yellow submarine which we all absolutely loved here. And uh, again, an older seed uh, was packed in 2016, so it'll be interesting to see how many germinate. We'll give them a go. I'm going to be planting 10 seeds per 9 centimetre pot. And when the leaves start to touch each other, that's a good um, indicator that they need to be potted on into a bigger pot. These won't be going into the polytunnel soil here till around about May, so I'm going to have to keep potting them on as they get bigger. Potentially, if every one of these germinated, I'd have 40 plants, which is made just way too many for our requirements here. But I think, um, A, not all of them are going to germinate. And also, if we do have a few extras, it's always nice to give a few away and swap them with friends and neighbours. So it's always nice to, to do a few different ones and a few extra. But we certainly need, wouldn't need any more than that. We certainly wouldn't need me to be planting the whole packet. Hence why I've got some left over from last year. When it's time to move them out into the polytunnel soil, so just to give you an example, I generally plant them around about 50 centimetres apart and I do them in a three because they're going to a narrow border. I have 50 centimetres apart at the back and then I might put a little cherry tomato in, in the front and between those. So it kind of a zigzag effect and that gives me a nice uh, distance to help prevent any uh, fungal diseases that might occur if they were too crammed closely together. So I think I'll just get on and I'll start sowing them and uh, we'll see how we get on.
So I'm using a seed compost. This is my organic seed compost and my pots are clean. They've been washed out and I literally just fill them up and I'm filling them to about a centimetre from the top. So I leave that space. Once I have one full, I just gently tap it down. I don't want to tap it down too closely because seeds need air to germinate. They need warmth, they need air, and they need water, oxygen. Without those three things, they're unlikely to germinate. So the warmth, particularly tomatoes, I'll be looking at putting these on my heated bench at around about 22 degrees. If you're planting them indoors, you'd want them on a nice sunny warm windowsill on a tray to catch the water. So let's get these going. Oops, this way. Another one. And then I didn't have another nine centimetre, so I'm going for one slightly bigger. For some reason, tomatoes really like to be planted around other tomatoes. They just don't seem to thrive. If I just put one seed in the middle of there, it wouldn't thrive nearly as well as if I plant a few of them together. You can try experimenting, see how you get on and see if you do find a difference. So first of all, I'm going to go for the yellow submarine. How many have I got left? I said I'm planting 10, but have I even got 10? I have three seeds. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's try these three in this pot together. See what happens. And I'll make a note on my label that I've only put three in. I thought I'd saved more. You can save the seeds. These are all organic uh, seeds. So when the tomato has finished, Try and save a few, and you've got seeds for next year. I'm surprised I didn't actually. So I'm actually going to, before I dot them down, I place them on top. I'm going to write on my label, uh, yellow submarine times three, and today's date. And we'll see what happens. So I'm going to pop that in. Lollipop sticks are brilliant for labels. They're biodegradable. You can buy them really cheaply in their hundreds. And uh, there, and I'm just only just going to cover surface. Now you can do two things here. You can either water afterwards, but the problem I find with watering afterwards is that sometimes the seed will rise to the top, which it hasn't amazingly, or usually I water before I plant the seeds. That gives my compost a chance to settle and if it's, I can always top up. I can show you an example of what's just happened by doing that. So I thought I had loads of compost in there. I had it filled to here. I've watered and you can see it's dropped. So I'm gonna drop, put a drop more in. And there we go. I'll just drop a little bit more in there. Um, in regard to watering, before you water, pick the pot up. How does it feel? Is it quite light? I know mine is quite light. So that gives you an indication of what a pot feels like if it doesn't have any water. And then once you have watered, I'm just going to add a little drop more. Once you have watered, now fit, have a feel. How does that feel now? you'll feel the difference in the weight. So that's a good indicator of when do you need to water, is it dry or not? The other way you can tell is literally just pop your finger in. Does it feel dry? I mean, you can see I, I've popped mine in, I've got a little dampness there and some compost come up. So I know that that's watered, it doesn't need any extra. That one is done. Let's get on to the next one. So this next one is my Dezenter, um, the Latvian one, which was delicious. And I hope I've got more than three seeds in that packet. Or this will be quite embarrassing. I think I have some there. You might hear some activity behind me. Whoops. Yeah, I've got several. Be careful when you're um, getting your seeds out that your hands are dry. Mine were... Um, 
just noticed because I'm not going to use all of these seeds so I want to put them back in and I don't want to put damp seeds back in. I want them to be nice and back into the bag, the ones that I don't use. So I'm just popping, I'm splitting them up here and I'm just going to pop in, how many have I got? Five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. I'm going to put twelve in this. It's slightly bigger. So there they are. And then the rest I'm going to separate out from that soil. And I'm going to pop back in here. And these should be okay to use next year now. They're sealed back in their bag. Straight back in the bag so I don't muddle them up. I find labelling is my biggest challenge. Um, and then I'm going to write on there. So I wrote, I planted 12, so that'll help me keep a check on how many have germinated and today's date. And then I'll just put a little covering over the top. And because they're already watered, they're fine. They're good to go. Next, I have my Siberians. This feels very empty. Maybe I should have checked to see how many. Oh, no, we're doing well. Galanas Siberian. Another vine. Again, it's always worth... And popped out there. If the packet doesn't tell you whether it's a bush or a vine variety, uh, have a Google before you start planting and planning. Um, in the past I've mistakenly assumed that cherry tomatoes were always little bush tomatoes, but they're not. Sometimes cherry tomatoes can be vine tomatoes, so don't, don't make assumptions. But look, we live and learn, and we learn um, the best way from the mistakes we make, I find. So, I know certainly last year, I, um, as I say, with all my labels getting in a muddle, I learned myself the differences if you try and treat a bush variety like a vine and vice, vice versa. So I'm just going to count these. One, two, three. Actually, double there, and I split it. So I have ten in there, and it's again some left for next year. As long as you keep your seeds in a good condition in a cool, airtight container, and I'm taking a lot more care of my tin these days. I'm using a permanent marker on the wood. That was ten. I'm also actually going to write on my label this time whether it's that it's a vine variety and that will help me when I come to pot up. Also remember that when you pot these up that each one will need a, a label again. Learn from my mistakes. The vine so that's a vine, that's a vine. The yellow submarine is a vine. And you can see because I watered this one afterwards, after I watered the compost has shrunk right the way down here. But I'm not adding more soil to top it up because then I'm going to bury my tomato seed too low. So I'll just leave it like that for this time. Um, so that was my Galanasum, and you can see I haven't, now they're all in, I'm going to just cover them. And again, this is already watered, so that's fine. And then finally, 
The last one is the Arctic Circle Bush variety. Lots of these. Next year I'll have to, when I'm ordering seed next year, I'll have to look at ordering some different red ones maybe or some blacks and purples just to mix things up a bit. But I will be saving the seed from some of these, assuming that I label them correctly. And uh, that will increase my stock for next year if some of these have lost their viability. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five, nine, ten. Just a double in there, actually. There's actually eleven in that one. I'll make a note that there's eleven. Okay. There we have it. Germination could take a couple of weeks, but hopefully we'll see some movement. I am coming out every day now um, and watching the temperatures like mad on the weather, apps and on the weather, and just checking to see if the temperatures are dropping down very cold. If they are, I'm coming out with the fleece. I'm uncovering the plants during the day, um, mostly because I'm here actually. If I wasn't, I probably would be inclined just to leave the fleece for the moment on there. But because I'm here and able to keep a check, I am. And that's it. I'll just keep an eye on them now. Make sure they need watering when they need watering. And hopefully everything crossed, because I'm sharing this with you, and um, we'll have some success that I'll be able to show you in a few weeks.